When I was a kid growing up, I used to go to the airport and watch the Boeing 707s take off with big black plumes coming out the back, and the industry has spent 50 years reducing that to the point where we don't see anything, but that does not mean that we cannot reduce the amount of emissions more than we have already. We're trying to improve human health by helping to limit the emissions of, of small particulates um, into the environment, and we also would like to reduce their effect on, on the potential for climate change. Aerodyne Research is a small business of about 75 employees. About half our business is traditional contract research work with the government and private companies, but the other half has to do with sales of state-of-the-art instrumentation, basically to the scientific community. The technology we've developed here is a means of providing a measurement of the amount of soot coming out the back of an aircraft engine, what's called the mass emission index, which is the amount of soot produced for the amount of fuel being burned. There are two major concerns about particulate matter coming out of the back of aircraft engine. One is, involves climate change. The particulates coming out the back of an aircraft engine basically comprises soot. So it absorbs light in all parts of the spectrum, and as a result, it tends to warm the atmosphere, raising the humidity levels in the atmosphere. The primary concern has to do with human health. Small particles, in this case below a tenth of a micron, infiltrate the lungs and are known to cause shortened lifespans in people who are exposed to high levels. We're producing an instrument that you basically can just turn on and start measuring emissions coming out of aircraft engines. It doesn't take a lot of preparation. You don't have to have highly trained personnel. It becomes very cost effective and very comparatively inexpensive. Ardium Technologies has about 15 employees. We make uh, about three different kinds of research instruments. The LII is one uh, for soot measurement. The functionality of the LII, or laser-induced incandescence, is a measurement instrument where we take the exhaust from, in this case, a jet engine, and hit it with a very high power, short pulse laser. And that causes the soot particles in the exhaust to heat up very rapidly. And when I say rapidly, on, on the order of nanoseconds. And as they heat up, they, they glow or incandesce, just like an incandescent light bulb. And by recording that signal with photo detectors, we can analyze what the temperature of the soot in the exhaust was, and then use that to relate uh, something about the size of the particles and also the concentration of the particles. The benefit of our instrument is that it runs at about a 20 hertz rate, so we can make measurements in fairly close to real time and, and capture very short transient events that other instruments don't. The committee that uh, is represented for this work is the SAE International Committee, specifically the E31 uh, Committee for Aircraft Engine Exhaust Emissions Measurement Technology. The subcommittee is called the Particle uh, Measurement Subcommittee, and it's for the development of particle measurement technology for gas turbine engine exhaust. And the E31 committee took this on as a challenge to develop this technology. We've been working on this for probably 10, 15 years, very heavily in the last five years, to develop the measurement technology to make these measurements. On the E31 committee, the SAE E31 committee, we identified a few years ago several technologies that could possibly be used to measure turbine exhaust. Two stood out in the front as being most mature at the time. For us to pursue. The leaders in developing those techniques were Artium doing the laser induced incandescence and then Aerodyne Research doing this extinction and scattering technique that uh, they call their ESCOM system. The Air Force needed these technologies to accomplish its missions, to report the emissions from turbine engines, which because of these commercial regulations that are coming out, the military will have to report these emissions as well. ADC uses the Air Force Civil Program throughout its mission. It needs it to help ADC become and stay the leader in its field. Without it, we wouldn't be able to stay at the forefront of the technology and be able to test the unique systems that we have throughout the base. Before these small businesses got involved into our portfolio and we were able to leverage Air Force Tiver, we weren't able to do any of the, these particular emissions measurements. Now that we have been able to leverage the SIBR program, we are able to make unique measurements that only four or five people in the world can make. At AEDC, we have a technology group specifically aimed at developing instrumentation and diagnostics to support the testing that goes on at AEDC. We have a very limited budget 
on what we can do inside. But in order to achieve all the test requirements for the different engines and so on, we have to utilize the Air Force the SBR program to get those experts that are outside AEDC to develop very specific instruments and, and uh, measurement technologies and stuff for us. So we utilize the SBR program in that manner to get things developed that we need that we can incorporate into the test facilities.